Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this animation right here. We'll be using the fluid simulation plus float particles and I'll be showing you exactly how it works. Before this tutorial begins, I want to let you guys know that I just updated the fluid simulation course that I created two years ago to Blender 2.8. This course you will learn all there is to know about the fluid simulation and how it works in Blender. I've created a special deal where if you use the code FLUIDBLEND at checkout, you will get this course for only $10. If you guys are interested in supporting me so I can continue creating Blender tutorials, feel free to check that out. Link is down in the description. To get started, we need two objects. We need a domain and a fluid source. For the domain, we will be using the default cube. We will not delete it this time. We'll bring it up so it's sitting on the grid floor and I'll press S to scale, and then I'll press S, X, and scale it along the X so it's a little bit longer. Something like that will be perfect. Next, what I want this simulation to be is the fluid to crash down this way and slide up this wall. You can have any simulation that you want if you want a UV sphere crashing to the floor. Do whatever you want. For this animation though, I'll just be using a cube on the left side. To do that, I'm gonna press Shift D on this cube and then right click so it snaps to the center and then I'll scale it down a little bit. Then I'll press S, X, and scale it so it's a lot thinner, something like that. Then I'll just move it over to the left. The next thing that we need to do is add in another object to have the particle type for the fluid simulation. Now this can be any object that you want. Let's just keep it simple though and add in a cube. I'll scale this cube down and move it over to the left and up a little bit so it's out of the way. Go over to the physics tab and click on fluid and set the type over to particle. The next thing that we need to do is select our cube right here and give it the domain. So I'll go fluid and set the type to domain. I'll go into wireframe and then I'll select the cube inside, go fluid, type, and then fluid. Now, before we get into the domain settings, let's go ahead and select our particle cube right here and there's three different options that we can choose from. Drops, this is basically the drops of uh, fluid. So if it crashes and the fluid flies out, that is going to be the drops. Float particles will kind of float on the surface of the fluid and you'll see that in this animation. And tracer particles, they kind of trace out where the fluid has been. And as you can see on screen with this animation, the fluid is kind of moving and the particles are following it. So what I'm gonna do for this animation is turn on floats, and then I will select my domain settings. The resolution, I'm gonna turn up to 150, and then the viewport, I'm going to set to final so we can actually see the final resolution in the viewport. And now for this time value, we need to figure out how long our animation is going to be. I'm gonna leave it at 250 frames. So with this time value, it's in seconds. So we need to take our frame rate and divide it by our time here. To find your frame rate, you can go over to the output settings here and you can see the frame rate is 24 frames per second. So let's just keep it simple and go with 10. It's a little over 10, but I think 10 seconds will be perfectly fine. And now underneath the boundary settings, I'm going to set the subdivisions up to one and this will just help smooth out the surface and the smoothing here. I'll go 1.2. And now let's open up this particle tab. And here is where you can set how many particles you want in your simulation. This generate value, if you set it to a value of one, it'll generate a lot of particles. And if you set this tracer amount to let's say 5,000, I think this generate value multiplies this 5,000 somehow. I'm not exactly sure how the math works, but I've noticed that if you set this generate higher and you also set the tracer higher, it multiplies it. Keep in mind, if you set the subdivisions up to a value of two, you will also have fluid particles, not just the float particles. And if this generate value is at one, it's going to look a little bit weird. So that is why I'm leaving the subdivisions down to one. So we don't have those fluid particles, but we will still have the float particles. One more thing to keep in mind, if you set a custom bake folder right here, you need to also set that same cache folder for the particle here. So you can see there's a cache here and then there's a cache here. So what I'm gonna do is actually set a new cache folder. So I'll just click on this button here and then I will save it to this folder and then click accept. Now what I'm gonna do is click on this bar right here, hit control C to copy. 
Then I'll select my particle, come over here and hit control V. So it's in the exact same position as our fluid cache here. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and save our project and then bake out our simulation. All right, the baking has finished and here is our results. And as you can see, the particles are floating right on the surface like that. And it looks pretty cool. It is quite laggy though, since there are a lot of particles, but it does look really good. So the next thing that we need to do is apply a object for the particles. So you can use a icosphere, a cube or whatever. I'll just go with an icosphere. So press shift A, we'll add in a mesh and then icosphere. Before you do anything, make sure you open up this menu here and turn the subdivisions down to one. Since there are a lot of particles, if the subdivision is up higher, it's going to lag even more. So make sure it's really low. Then I'll just move it over to the left and scale it down pretty small. Next, go ahead and select your cube and go over to the particle system. Click on the particle system right here. Underneath render, click on render as halo to render as object. Then the instant object, all you have to do is select the icosphere and then we'll select, let's go with like 155 and we can see all of the particles and it's really starting to slow down. So before I do anything else, cause I want the viewport to run a little bit faster, I'm gonna open up the viewport settings and set the amount, the display amount right here down to 10%. So it's only showing 10% of the actual particles. In the render view though, it will show 100%. So don't worry about changing this. I'm gonna go back into solid view and see how this looks. I'm going to select my icosphere and scale them down even more till the particles are pretty small. Something like that I think will look pretty good. Maybe a little bit more. All right, so now let's get into the lighting and materials for our object. First though, I'm going to select my fluid and then just hide it from the viewport and hide it from the render. If you don't see this camera icon, that is because you have to enable it. So click on this menu and make sure the camera icon is turned on. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and select our fluid, right click and I'll go shade smooth. Next for the material, I'm going to go over to the material tab and underneath transmission, I'm going to turn that all the way up to one. This will enable it to look like glass. Currently though, the roughness is way too high. So I'll turn that down to zero. The IOR, which stands for index of refraction is basically how light passes through and distorts uh, the water. And for, for water, it's 1.333. So make sure you set that there. I might give it a blue color just slightly. You don't want to go too high because it will look a little bit weird, but just a slight blue color might look pretty good. For the icosphere, go ahead and select it in the outliner, click new, and I'll just leave it at the basic white material. Next, I'm going to press shift A and add in a plane and scale up the plane till it's pretty large, just like that. And then also make sure it's right next to the fluid. So I'll just drag it up just slightly. So it's sitting right there for the lighting. I'm going to go over to the world settings and make this just a little bit darker. And then I will select this lamp here and change it to a sun lamp. So go over to the lamp settings. I'll change it to a sun lamp and the strength of this. I will set to four. I'm going to be using Eevee for our render engine. So make sure you come over here and switch it to Eevee if it's not already there. And now we'll go into render view to see what this looks like. We need to turn on a couple of things here. So first off ambient occlusion, I'll turn on screen space reflections and then open that up and make sure refraction is turned on. Select your fluid, go back over to the material tab and underneath the settings, we need to set the blend mode to alpha blend and then turn on screen space refraction. And this will enable us to see through the water. You might notice some weird artifacts over on this left side, and that is because show back face is turned on. Make sure you turn that off so the water looks really smooth. I'm going to select my sun lamp and just rotate it a little bit and place it over here. Something like that I think will look good. The strength is a little high, so I might turn that down to three. All right, there we go. So now for the camera, I'll just position it right about here. I'll hit control alt and zero to snap the camera to place. And then I'll just move it a little bit and position it something like this. 
So then what you can do is just scroll through here and make sure it looks good. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, I might go back over to the render settings and underneath color management, I'll set the look to medium high contrast just to add a little bit more contrast to our scene. And finally, I will select the plane, go over to the material tab, click on new, and I'll set the roughness of the principled shader down to a value of 0.1. And now that we've done that, we are ready to render. So I'm gonna save my project one more time and go over to the output settings. Whenever you're rendering animation, you should always render it in frames and then sequence it out later. This will enable you to stop the render anytime and resume it at that point. Make sure you uncheck overwrite because if you have to stop the render, it won't overwrite the frames that are, that are already in the folder. So make sure that's unchecked and then set an output folder. I'm going to select my frames folder right here and click accept. Underneath the sampling, I'm gonna set the render amount to 40 so it renders just a little bit faster. Once you've done that, go ahead and save your project, then go up to render and click on render animation. Once this is done, I will show you guys how to sequence it out. Okay, the render has finished and here is our result. If you want to view the animation, what you can do is go up to render and click on view animation or the shortcut control F11. Once you do this, a new window will pop up and you'll be able to see your animation. And as you can see, the particles do look pretty cool. Uh, they're kind of floating all along the fluid. It looks pretty neat. Now before this video ends, I do want to show you how you can sequence out your frames into a movie file. What you need to do is go up to this plus sign, click on video editing, and then video editing. It'll take you to this panel right here. And what you're gonna do is make sure your cursor is at the start, click add image sequence, and then navigate to where your images are, mine are right here. And then, then I'll press A to select everything and go add image strip. Once you do that, you can come over to the output setting and you can set this to a movie file of your choice. I'm going to go with an MP4 right here, and then I'm going to set the output quality to high. Once I've done that, I can go up to render and click on render animation and it will take those frames and put them into a movie file. And since the frames are already rendered, this should go pretty quickly. All right, the render is done. And as you can see, our movie file is now in this folder. So there you go, guys. That is how you use float particles in Blender 2.8. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. And I'll see you guys in the next one.